we'll get started. Uh, we'll start with the definition. What is an optimistic update? Uh, so we're talking about optimistic updates on, uh, on the UI. So this is when the client predicts the results of a transaction and applies it before the result comes back from the server. I'm sure you've all seen uh, applications, actually we have some examples, uh, adding a new comment on Hacker News. So here there is no update at all. You submit and you get a brand new page. Uh, on Reddit, this is the thing that Optimistic Updates solve for. So you have a, an Ajax form, you submit a new comment, uh, it spins for a second, the server uh, does something, and then it gets a result, and it sticks it into the HTML without refreshing. Um, and then an example where you really have optimistic updates is in the Telescope, which if you're familiar, it's a uh, Meteor JS app, uh, kind of a Hacker News Reddit clone. Uh, you click Submit, you see your comment, and it may have saved, it may have not saved. Uh, you'll find out a little bit later something, it'll go away if it didn't work. Um, so I'll show you one, one place where this is uh, kind of important. So we have here a sketching application. So I'm going to draw like a little avatar, and then I'm going to change the size. So if I had not updated this thing optimistically, I would have had to sit there and wait for you know 50 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds while I talked to the server and then came back and that you just wouldn't be able to do anything. So this is an application I wrote that uh, it, it, uh, it uses optimistic updates. So we'll see a little bit later, you know, kind of uh, take some examples from that application. First thing you need uh, to get optimistic updates, you need the client to be able to predict what the server is going to return. Right? So it just has to implement its own version of the server logic. Uh, so, so there's some subtle difficulties here, which we'll get to later. Uh, but on its surface, you know, it's fairly simple. You submit a comment, it knows like the structure of the comment. It's going to have an ID, uh, a name, a comment body. So we can guess that that's what the server is going to return when it's done. Okay. Uh, so there's a couple ways to do this. Uh, so the way we did it in Precursor is uh, we just implemented the full database on the client. Uh, we use this thing called DataScript, and uh, on the top right here, this is what the this is what the server uses to transact new data, and this is what it returns. Uh, on the client, it does the same thing. It's almost identical, except that uh, there's an exclamation point, and uh, you don't have to dereference it. Uh, and then afterwards, so I've changed here my width from 10 or 20 to 10. Uh, I've also put like the uh, the same data in there twice. Um, so this is what I got back afterwards. This is what my layer looks like now. Um, just want to notice note that uh, this one really thing, nice thing about DataScript is I get back just the change that uh, that that I made. So even though I put shape in there, it, it didn't show up in the change set. That, that comes in really handy when you're uh, trying to resolve conflicts because uh, you don't have to, we'll get to this a bit later, but you, you wouldn't end up accidentally changing the, the shape just because the width changed and you wanted to roll back that change. Uh, so another technique, so that was, uh, that was read it, write a database. Another technique, this is what uh, uh, Relay uses for their mutations. If you want to uh, get an optimi optimistic update with that, you, uh, you have to think about what the database is going to return, and you just, you just write a function that takes uh, the parameters that you provided to this mutation, and it returns the data that the server is going to return back to you. So it's, it's nice because it's, uh, you can kind of add this stuff incrementally, uh, but the, the downside is you, know, you don't get it globally. So when you have the whole database on the client, this is also what Meteor does where it has like a Mongo client on the client, a Mongo implementation on the client. You don't have to think about it, it just works globally. Uh, so, you know, there's downsides, upsides to both approaches. Okay, so that's what optimistic updates are. Uh, what could possibly go wrong? Uh, there's lots of stuff. Uh, you end up uh, with inconsistent state. Uh, you end up with flashes of content. Uh, we'll go through some examples. So, 
an example from, uh, was, this was originally in the uh, React uh, uh, tutorial, the main one, but they've now, they've re since removed it. Um, it's very simple, you get uh, a new comment, so you wanna submit the comment. Uh, you get the comments that this state dot, this dot state dot data is the comments that currently exist. Uh, you take the comment that you got, you add it to your current comments, and then you re-render. This dot set state is gonna re-render with the new comments, so you're done. And then that's where, that's where you get your optimistic update. Now you send it to the server. Uh, the server is gonna send back the comments again, and you can replace uh, the current state. Or if the server failed, you just have to revert back to the previous state. Uh, so, you know, it stored a copy earlier. It's an immutable piece of data. Okay, so let's see how this goes wrong. We'll go through uh, a kind of a timeline here. So, uh, so we get the server request. We make the new comment. Can I show my mouse? I guess not. Uh, so we get here. We optimistically render the first comment. Uh, and then before we get, before this stuff finishes, we add a second comment and we optimistically render it. So we've got two comments in the DOM. Everything's going well. Uh, but instead of our one going, or the first request coming back, the second cut request comes back early. So we optimistically render uh, C1 again. And then this time we really render C2. That one's actually the real comment. But then the first request fails. We call this uh, set state data comments. It's back to no comments because that's what we started with. And then we have a completely inconsistent state. Maybe this, the client uh, sends another update um, and accidentally erases the comment. So this is not good. Uh, it's also, it's not just specific to this. It's, it's also a problem with, uh, it's also a problem with uh, undo. So one technique for undo is just save the state, do something, roll back to the old state. But then you lose all these intermediate updates. Uh, so the solution for that is keep your optimistic state separate. Uh, and the solution for the undo, I think, is to uh, keep track of uh, every update you make, you want to have like some reversible kind of function so you can undo it without affecting the whole tree. Okay, so you have some resolver to apply the optimistic state at run render time. You don't really want to uh, keep track of these two states. If you can push it up as far as possible, you won't have to worry about rectifying them every time you get their comments. It's much nicer this way. You also can do some caching if you have a whole bunch of uh, things that haven't been applied yet. It might be expensive to apply them all. And it's much easier if you can build it uh, at the top level. Uh, generically. So when you have like the database, you, you don't have to worry about these special cases where it, where it might not work and you have to implement some special logic. It's all, it's all there for you. It all works every single time. And then the other thing you need to do is keep track of the transaction for a rollback. So keep track of which piece of data goes to which request. And that way you can uh, undo the change by itself. It's also great for showing that the change can't be saved. Uh, I can't demo it very well, but if, you, if you're on Precursor um, and you draw something uh, and the server can't save it for whatever reason, it grays out the things that you saved, it pops up a little error and asks you if you want to you know, retry. Uh, it works fairly well. Keeps, keeps you from getting too far off of, uh, off of uh, the like, pure state that the server actually has. Okay, another big problem is uh, creating new entities. Uh, so the new entities, they don't have an ID yet. The server needs to understand like what this is, where it goes. Uh, so there's kind of two approaches for this. One is temporary IDs. Uh, so we, I've, I've done this a couple of times. Uh, what you do is you have a temporary ID, you send it to the server. The server sends back the results with uh, the real ID and then you swap them out. But they tend to just infect everything because Lots of places in your code care about the ID. Uh, they tend to have dependencies, so other pieces of data will depend on the ID of this thing. So you have to resolve the IDs everywhere. And you end up forgetting, you get these really weird bugs, things won't save, you can't figure out why. 
So a better solution. Uh, lots of people have done this. Uh, client generating, client generated IDs. Uh, it's much easier to re reason about. You don't have to have like, any accounting. You just everyone uses the same ID. Um, there is a problem if an attacker can guess the next ID that you generate. They can put something else there first, and maybe you'll accidentally update their thing instead of uh, writing your own new thing. Uh, there's other problems that I can't think of right now, but uh, this should be okay if you generate the UUIDs with crypto.random. It's in all the browsers, all the newest browsers. So it's not, it's not really a problem anymore. should be safe. You can also send down like batches of IDs for the client, um, but that kind of gets a little hairy, hard to reason about also. Okay, the other problem is uh, concurrent updates. Uh, so we'll just go through like a quick example. Um, if you have multiple requests being sent to the server at the same time, and you have two pieces of data that depend on each other, uh, this will happen. It's also with IDs. Uh, if you create a new thing, and then you attach something else to that thing, and the first thing hasn't finished uh, sending, uh, the server will error because it doesn't know what you're updating. Um, so in this example, we created a new comment. Uh, made two requests to create a, the second request references the first request. Uh, the first request uh, takes extra time for some reason. Uh, then when the second request gets to the server, it throws an error because it's a reply to a non-existing comment. The C1 hasn't been created yet. Um, so there's a few places, ways to fix this. I think the best thing is to just send your updates in serial. Uh, so you can make a queue on the front end that uh, sends out one request at a time. Hopefully you can batch things, but if not, like people don't make that many updates that the round trips are going to cause you problems. Um, another way is to queue on the back end. Uh, that can work if you have a single connection. So like Precursor uses a single connection. It sends everything down. We don't have to worry about things getting out of, out of order. Um, because JavaScript single-threaded, it's all nice and easy to reason about. Um, but if you were worried about uh, having, uh, you didn't want to wait for every request, you didn't want to batch them up, if you could figure out if your um, updates were correlated at all, if there's any references to other updates in that set, then you can also do just a queue per set. Um, so that's a little, little nicer, but it requires you to know a lot about your data. Um, which is also a nice reason to have the database as the, uh, the point of abstraction because that, that you implement in the client, because then you don't have to worry about figuring that out. The database can figure it out for you. Okay, so uh, main idea is keep your state separate. Think carefully about how you handle new objects because uh, it could cause you a lot of problems unless you're you know, thinking about it from the beginning. And uh, keep track of dependent transactions. <coughs> and then you're good to go. Thank you for watching this talk. Down below, you can find our channel, VNLGS, where you can find a lot of different videos about front-end and back-end JavaScript. And feel free to subscribe.